I lived in Staten Island during the 80s, and back then you couldn't walk 10 feet without bumping into a wise guy. I was fortunate to meet Porky, who was known for building a major bookmaking operation and known for taking bets from baseball legend Pete Rose, but he's also known for his kindness. He did get me and a lot of other street punks good jobs in the Jacob Javits Center in Fulton Fish Market. Uh, years later, the government cracked down, saying only in-laws and outlaws worked there. Porky was the first person kicked out of the Jacob Javits Center. <laughs> the two best men I have ever met in life were my stepfather and Porky. Uh, ironically, they were both born on the same day. In the 80s, a neighbor introduced me to Porky, simply saying he's a good guy to know. We were standing outside when this old shebang of a car pulled up, and Porky got out of the passenger seat with a big smile on his face saying, Man, I heard good things about you. I wanted to meet you. Uh, you're boxing down in Gleason's gym. I said, Yes. Next, he said, Do you have a girlfriend? I said, No. He said, Oh, I have the perfect girl for you. Then he said, I'll get you a good job. He said, You want to work at the Javits Center? You want to work at the Fulton Fish Market? What about the New York Post? Then he said to me, When is your birthday? I said, 12 12. He says, Wow. He said, I'm a Sagittarius too. I'm 11 23. When he left, I still had no clue who this man I just talked to was, nor was I told. Nevertheless, I felt a strong kind of connectedness towards him. Soon after, I kept noticing the number 1123, which was Porky's birthday. So I played the number 50 cent straight, 50 cent box, and I friggin' won. I can't believe it. Everyone in the area was talking about it because I told them, and people were saying, you know, why the hell did you only put 50 cents on it? Very quickly, I seen that my limitations with this man were unlimited. Unfortunately, I'd been, I had been too abused by my mother, and I didn't know which way was up. In time, we had gone our separate ways. I made a mistake by leaving Staten Island, a big mistake. Uh, but Porky kept coming back into my life again and again. My mother had thrown me into the streets, and I grew up a street punk, and along the way, I built up many friendships with mobsters. I missed the laughter. In the 80s, I was at an engagement party where Joey D'Amico gave me a pack of cigarettes. He told me to put it on the table. Next to this chubby woman, uh, a few minutes later, a cigarette blew up in this guy's face. He was about 350 pounds. They called him Baby Huey. Uh, he went crazy, and, you know, John Porky, he diffused the situation, pulled me to the side and said, you know, you're either the bravest person I ever met or the most stupidest. He didn't know that Joey had put me up to it. A short time later, Joey D'Amico takes me into the kitchen, and he's cutting out a piece of cardboard in the shape of a samurai sword. He's wrapping aluminum foil around it. And it looked real. He hands it to me and says, go fuck with baby Yui. So I go outside. I start running towards him. And him and his wife booked. And I'm running after him. People are screaming. And John is yelling, come here. Give me that sword right now. I gave it to him. And he bends it in his hand and rips it in pieces. We all laughed so hard. I, I felt like I was back in high school. In 1995, I was in Queensboro Work Release Facility. I was on the top bunk. And underneath me was Porky. To my side was Tommy Spinelli. Once a week, I would sneak in a shopping bag full of sandwiches from a kosher deli. And one day, my friend Danny w uh, walked over to us. He was a black kid. He did 20 years. And Porky tossed him a pastrami sandwich. He got me to the side, and he whispered. He said, this is a scene right out of The Godfather. It sure was. In 1981, I was 19 years old. I had no family, no money, no place to live, no real friends to speak of. But I met Pat Romanello, and my life was transformed. Because him and his friends had taken a liking to me. They had pushed me along and paved the way for me to succeed. And everything was always 100% legit. Pat would tell casino owners, business owners, everyone, treat this kid as if he was me. And they did. They treated me like I was royalty because of the friendship I had with Pat. Through the 80s and into the 90s, people kept approaching Pat with offers to go into fake wrestling. 6000 a match, 10000 a match, 12000 a match. But the higher-ups, Joe Messina and Sal Vitali, would not let him accept those offers. When Ted Arcidi set a new world bench-pressing record, 706 pounds, Pat was benching 880 pounds. Sonny told me once, Pat, he is not human. Around 1987, Pat had given me a new Eldorado to drive. I had it for about a week. I remember being at a light in Brooklyn when a limousine pulled up to me. All I seen was this hand hanging out a window with a huge diamond bracelet which said Sally. A voice said, what the hell are you doing in my car? The car belonged to Sal Vitale, the underboss of the Bonanno crime family. I remember Sal saying, Patty, you sick fuck. You gave this kid my car? 
In 2005, a federal court judge allowed Patrick Romanello to leave prison to attend his daughter's wedding. The newspapers did a two-page spread called Married to the Mob. Uh, besides that, I'd like to give a shout-out to a good friend of ours, uh, Nick Casella. Uh, Sonny really loved this kid. I mean, uh, he, you know, I'm giving him credit. He took Sonny out to Little Italy, took him around everywhere, took him out to eat. I mean, Sonny really loved this kid. A close friend of Sonny was Raymond Patriarca Sr. According to Sonny, it was Patriarca who introduced him to Frank Sinatra and heavyweight champ Rocky Marciano. Patriarca also told Sonny, I don't want any New York guys coming into my territory. And Sonny said no one ever went there. Patriarca also hated newspaper reporters. He would flick lit cigarettes into their face saying, get the fuck out of my way. It gave Sonny great joy to speak about Raymond Patriarca. Sonny told me that if they ever found Whitey Bulger, he would be annihilated, adding, Raymond Patriarca has power beyond the grave. Ray Patriarca donated millions to local colleges and hospitals. His family continues to donate big money to food pantries, homeless shelters, and orphanages. Last year, they donated 100 bicycles to underprivileged kids. Ray Patriarca Jr. is retired and currently living in Italy. He watched my John Sonny Franzese interview telling his daughter, what your friend Vito did for the old man was very admirable. Sonny was like one of those blow-up clowns with the weighted bottom. The harder you hit it, the faster it comes back. No matter what the government did to him, he would never rat on anyone. When Carmine Persico called him and Michael in because Michael was stealing from the family, Sonny took full responsibility for Michael's actions because he vouched for him. He never threw Michael or anyone under the bus, ever. I was thrown into the streets by my mother at a young age, but I learned integrity, I learned loyalty from people like Pat Romanello and Porky. If it wasn't for me meeting them, I don't think I would have been such a good friend to Sonny. I don't think I would have been able to help him. Those two guys made me the person that I am to help somebody else.